Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie, if you are new here, and I create all kinds of home and lifestyle videos here on my channel. Today is a little bit more of a lifestyle type video. So I explained in, I think, my last um, home video, which I do mostly home videos here on my channel, um, but currently there's not a lot of home projects going on because my husband and I actually just got back from Europe where we were for two weeks. We went to Italy and Greece um, and had a wonderful time. Um, not a lot of home projects going on since we are kind of getting back in the groove of things from that. But when we got home, I started to kind of think about the fact that I miss travel so much and I used to travel so much, you know, before the last couple of years. And I have kind of gotten a system down for packing. And so I wanted to kind of share with you all my tips for packing for a vacation, whether that be you know, across the world or just in the country or a road trip, whatever. Um, I have this thing where I only pack in a carry-on if I'm flying. If I'm driving, I will pack more. But um, I packed for our trip to Europe in a carry-on for two weeks and people were really surprised by that. So I wanted to give some um, advice maybe for you if you are going on a trip, whether it's domestic or international. If you are flying and you wanna to try to pack in a carry-on, this video is for you. Okay, so the first thing that I do when I am planning out how to pack for my trip is I try to make some kind of loose itinerary. Obviously this kind of depends on where you are going, um, if you really know what your plans are gonna be, but if possible, if you kind of have a general idea of where you are going on which days, what kinds of things you'll be doing, it's really good to kind of make note of all those things so that when you are planning your outfits and planning what to pack, you'll be able to do so in a way that's organized. So for example, for our trip, we had an itinerary and we knew which days we were doing museums or tours, we knew which days we were going to the beach and things like that. So I tried to write down the dates, the city that we were gonna be in, cause we traveled around a little bit, as well as some activities. And then I kind of look at, try to list all the things that we were gonna be doing that day. The next thing, if you wanna take it a step further, I don't always do this, but if you wanna take it a step further and you're going somewhere where like, maybe weather will be inconsistent, I sometimes and have in the past written down the weather for that day in that place, if you can see far enough ahead, um, just so you might know what to prepare for like outfit wise. Um, once you have your kind of loose itinerary down, then you wanna start listing outfits that you need for that day, outfit or outfits. Now, if you are like me and you're trying to pack light, especially if you have limited space, plan on one outfit a day um, and then maybe have like an outfit or two back up in case one day you get too sweaty and you need to change or you have to kind of wear something that is a little bit different style for the evening depending on formality and things like that. But for me, I just tried to plan on one outfit a day and because we were in Europe, I just plan on wearing dresses almost the whole time. I was like, I'll wear a dress for the day because it it's, can be casual, but it can also be you know nice for dinner. So I just stayed in my dresses for the whole day um, with sneakers for walking and then sometimes with sandals for um, going somewhere that night or sometimes I left my sneakers on. But So you wanna have your itinerary and then you wanna start brainstorming like an idea for an outfit that you might have, whether it's very general, like dress and sneakers or you know jeans, cute top, sandals. Or I usually do that first and then later you can go in and add the specific, like I wanna wear my yellow floral dress and my white tennis shoes, just to kind of um, be more specific, but have a general idea first off. Then what you can do once you have all your days, all of your activities written down and then outfits for that day listed that will be appropriate for those activities, start to write down everything that you've written as far as items that you wanna pack. So if you have written down, you know, jeans and cute top four times, then you need to write down jeans and then four cute tops. And for me, I usually just bring one pair of jeans, but um, that way when you're doing your packing list, you know how many of each thing that you need. And that's kind of the more broad. So then if you say, you know, I wrote dress down seven times, I need seven dresses, okay? So does that kind of make sense? From there, you can start to realize if there's things you can double up on. So like, for example, the jeans. If you wrote jeans and cute top down a couple of times, you could probably just bring one pair of jeans. And so that's how you're kind of repeating one piece multiple ways in order to get the most out of what you're packing. So a little tip on that note, I always, almost always wear the same outfit for the plane to and from my destination. This just keeps it kind of simple. I usually wear like, a sweat set of some sort, like a little crew neck and joggers, and then my jean jacket over it. 
Um, this is because it is the bulkiest clothing that I don't want to pack, but because it'll keep you warm, it's layers. You can take off like the crew neck and wear a t-shirt underneath if you want to, um, but layers that you can take on and off if there's different temperatures on the plane or in the airport. And then when you get off the plane and walk outside and it's hot, um, you can have layers on, but also so that you have layers available to you on your trip. So I know for me, I like to have a pair of sweats with me in case I am, you know, at the hotel room and I'm between, you know, I took off my outfit from the day, but I'm going to put it back on, but I just want to like lounge for a second in the hotel room. I might throw my sweats on. So I like to have a pair of sweats with me. I just think they take up too much room in the suitcase. So I always wear them on the plane to and from. This is especially great if you have, if you're able to do laundry at some point on your trip. But honestly, I don't really care about wearing the same sweatsuit twice. It is what it is. Um, and it saves you a lot of room when packing. And I don't feel like travel days are days that you have to have um, a really specific outfit planned. And this is a way that you can save room in your suitcase. Also going on that, I always wear my jacket on the plane and I usually try to bring only one jacket. So if it's the spring summer, I might do like a jean jacket or like a cozy cardigan. Um, and that's just the jacket or cardigan or cover up that I wear for the whole trip with any outfit that I have. So I always make sure it'll work with any outfit that I have, but that way I'm not packing a jacket in my suitcase because that can take up a lot of room. And I have been on trips where I have brought multiple jackets. I try to reserve that for trips only in the winter time. And even then I try to be really selective of how many I am packing. Typically for trips in the winter time, I will pack more jackets, but my layers underneath don't matter as much since my I'm wearing a jacket over them. So I will save room on that end of things, if that makes sense. So for this time of year specifically, a jean jacket is what I wore over my little sweats outfit to Europe and back. It's also what I wore on the plane from, we went, we flew from Rome to Athens and I wore the same outfit. And then I'm going on a trip again this summer, a different trip, a domestic trip. And I'm gonna wear like a little tank top joggers and my and a cardigan because the cardigan I think is gonna go better with some of the outfits I have planned for that. So all that to say, limit your jackets. Those things can get very bulky in your suitcase. Another tip on the same note, you really wanna be careful how many pairs of shoes you bring. This is where you can really take up a lot of room in your suitcase and lose space if you pack too many pairs of shoes. So really, Think about being as minimal as possible with your shoes. Shoes, I, I don't really feel like shoes matter that much. I almost always travel in sneakers. So I will wear a pair of sneakers, like cute fashion sneakers that I could wear with dresses, jeans, you know, anything like that. I will wear those sneakers on the plane and then I will usually pack one additional pair of shoes, just one additional. So for example, last year I went to California in, it was September, I think. And even though in California you can wear sandals all the time, I opted to bring like a booty option. So I had a little pair of booties in my suitcase and that was the only extra pair I brought and then I wore my sneakers most of the time. For this Europe trip, I broke my rule and I brought two extra pairs of shoes, but we were gone for two weeks. So I wore my sneakers on the plane and then I packed a pair of Birkenstocks and I packed a pair of very, very flat sandals that pretty much took up this much room. That was because I knew we were going to be doing a lot of walking and I wanted to have good walking tennis shoes, walking sandals because if we went to the beach or something, and then I wanted to have a sandal that was a little bit nicer looking in case we went somewhere fancier and that's why I had those really flat sandals. I did not bring any kind of wedges, any kind of heels, anything like that because that is so bulky um, that it just wasn't worth it to me. So that was how I really whittled down what shoes I packed for this trip. And I will say I wore my sneakers and my Birkenstocks probably evenly. And then I wore the um, sandals like for probably four evenings, like to dinners and stuff. And so I was really glad that that's how I packed for the shoes for this trip. Sometimes this doesn't always work. Like for the summer, for example, where we are going, I am gonna need to bring hiking boots. And unfortunately that's very bulky in your suitcase. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do about that. Um, but if you have to bring a specialty pair of shoes, like hiking boots, I'm obviously not going to wear those on the plane. So I'm going to have to bring those in my suitcase and then either the shoes that I wear on the plane wear the whole time or bring like another flat sandal. Luckily it is summertime. That doesn't take up a lot of room in my suitcase. Okay. Another tip is invest in a good backpack or 
bag that you can put under the seat. So the way that I kind of have made it work to pack all in a carry-on is that I have a carry-on suitcase for the overhead bin, and then I have my personal item, which I usually use a backpack that goes under the seat. So it really depends on where you're going. I have in the past opted for a beach bag as my under the seat bag when we went on our honeymoon to Jamaica. I have also done a tote bag as my under the seat bag um, when I've gone to New York, mostly because those were the purses I was gonna use on that trip. And I didn't want to have a backpack because you can't really walk around New York with a backpack. I mean, I guess you can, but I wasn't gonna do that. For Europe, of course, we did use our backpacks. So I packed, I got this new Lululemon backpack for my birthday and I really like it because it's very big, but it's small enough to fit under the seat still. So the reason I do this is because I pack my, all of my toiletries in my backpack, a book, usually my electronics. And then typically I will try to pack like one outfit, like a backup outfit in case I have to check my luggage and my luggage gets lost. I at least have like a change of clothes. So in my backpack. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. I obviously carry on my luggage because I'm paranoid about them losing my luggage. So that's not something that I anticipate happening, but sometimes when the planes are really full, they do force you to check you check your carry-on suitcase if the plane is really full, or in the case of Europe where their overhead bins are teeny tiny, and even my teeny tiny little roller bag was like kind of too big. I, I still did it, but it took up more room than I felt good about doing, but that's a whole other story. So that's another tip. Have a good sized bag, as big as you can have to fit under the seat, but small enough that it still fits under the seat. That way you can use that as overflow for your carry-on suitcase and also to, ho to hold the things that you really, really will need in case something happens with your suitcase. Okay, so once you have made your packing list, like I mentioned, where you listed everything out in terms of how many of each item you need, I usually break things up into categories. So I say like dresses, this many dresses, um, you know, tops, this many tops. And that is when I start to pick which dresses and which tops. So I'll start to be more specific, you know, this dress, this dress, this dress, whatever. That way I have a more detailed packing list. And when I'm in my closet, I know exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, then when you are actually packing, how do I fit all of these items in a carry-on suitcase? So for Europe, I packed, I feel like I packed like nine dresses at least and a pair of jeans and three tops, three bathing suits, two swim covers. I think that was it. One pair of shorts, one pair of jeans, I said. Um, and one pair of pajamas. So that's how, that's another tip is I will just bring one pair of pajamas if I'm short on room. And I always shower before bed when I'm putting my pajamas on. That way my pajamas stay clean because I am clean when I put them on. So, you know, if that's gross, I'm sorry, but that's just how I, what I do to save room. And then whenever I do laundry on the trip, I wash my pajamas. So I usually, you know, depending on how long the trip is, I can wash them once or twice. Um, to make sure that I, you know, have clean pajamas, but it's not worth wasting the space on that for me. Then to actually make everything fit, I use these like vacuum seal bags. They're not really vacuum seal, but they're like big Ziploc bags that I got on Amazon. I'll show y'all that you, I roll up all my clothes and I put them in the bag and then I roll the bag and it rolls air out and then the bag shrinks and then I can kind of pull it straight and it's flatter. So I will try to find the exact ones that I use, but this to me is a lot more effective than packing cubes. It's not as organized and the disadvantage is that every time you open it, you pull something out and you have to re-roll it if you need to make your suitcase small again, um, as I did in Europe because we went to multiple places. But if you're just going one place and you can kind of let your suitcase explode and then repack it at the end of the trip, this is a lot easier. Um, but I use these to really save space and I tell you, they work so, so well. I had a trip to New York once in the winter and I packed a couple of jackets in one of those and it went from like this big to like this big. And I was able to bring like a couple of jacket options because I had those little rollout bags. So definitely something to consider. That being said, your clothes will be pretty wrinkly if you use those. So it's worth it in my opinion to bring like a small handheld steamer if you have the option or if you're going somewhere you know won't have like an iron or something. Okay, another tip. I always bring a bag for dirty clothes, obviously just to keep them separate. Um, a lot of like uh, like TJ Maxx, those kind of stores will have like laundry bags um, and then a lot of hotels obviously have them as well. 
The other thing is I wait until the very end to pack my like underwear and socks because what I do is I make sure everything's packed. So usually like my shoes, if I can get them up against an edge and then my flat layers of my vacuum seal, they're not really vacuum seal, the, the Ziploc bags, we'll call them kind of flat. And then I will fit in my underwear and socks all around them in whatever little crevices I can find in my suitcase. Because I feel like if you put those all in a packing cube, then you've got this bulkier thing to fit in your suitcase. Whereas like you can roll up a sock and tuck it like, you know, behind something or whatever. And you can kind of fill in the spaces. Then again, it's not as organized and you might have to dig through your suitcase to find things. But to me, it does save a lot of room. Once you have everything packed, see how well your suitcase closes. If you need to eliminate, that's when you kind of have to start thinking what things can be you know, eliminated. Um, I think I eliminated a couple, I think I had anticipated on needing like more than one outfit a day when we went to Europe. So I ended up just eliminating a couple of extra outfits so that I only had like one outfit a day and then I think two extras or something. Um, but I would even say travel even lighter than that. And depending on where you're going, if it's somewhere you might wanna do a little bit of shopping, I would make sure like at the most you have one outfit per day because then if you want to shop you have a little bit of extra room and you might get a chance to wear one of your new items um if you're being if you're really confident you could find something out shopping then bring even less than you like bring even less outfits than days you're going to be gone and buy outfits for the you know a few days of your trip it could be fun that way i've never done that but i want to do that soon because i always go places and i don't have room to bring anything back because i pack in a carry-on so that's going to be something i do next time okay and the very last thing i would say is with your toiletries i always i only only bring body wash shampoo and conditioner if we are going somewhere that I don't know, there will be products provided. So if we're going somewhere and we're staying in a hotel, um, at least in this country out there in Europe, I brought things because I didn't know what their hotels would be like. But I, in if we're going somewhere in the country and we're staying at like a you know Marriott or whatever, I know that they have shampoo and conditioner and body wash. So I don't bring mine. Some people are particular about the products that they use, but for me, for a few days or a week, having to use some products from a hotel really isn't going to destroy my hair and I don't worry about it. So I save room by not bringing those with me. The other thing is if you are domestic and you can't find, you know, you, you don't bring a product and then you need it, you can always run to Target. That's the beauty of when you travel in the country. Oh, and I did have one more thing. I forgot. If you're somebody like me and you still read physical books and you bring your physical book on the plane, sometimes I worry about, oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna need more than one book or I'm gonna be finished with this book pretty early on in the trip so I need something else to read after. Try to just bring one book. And I am a big library girl, but I would say bring a book that you own and you have purchased, you know, go to the thrift store or buy it, Target, whatever. That way, if you need to, you can leave it behind, okay? So for example, I, was on a trip when we were on our Europe trip, a girl on our tour, she was reading a book and I was reading a book and we decided when we both finished, we would swap books. So I gave her my book, she gave me hers, and then I had a book to read for the rest of the trip and the flight home and so did she. So that worked out really well. Obviously, if you don't like know anybody that you might run into on your trip, you might not be able to do a swap, but you can always leave your book behind and buy another one um, or something like that just to save room in your carry-on going home. Okay, and last thing I will say, you guys, is you really don't need as much as you think you do. I know, you know, I have friends that are overpackers and I would in theory be an overpacker because I really like clothes and I always plan my outfits and plan to wear fun things on trips. But in reality, you don't need as much as you think you do and you can definitely scale back a little bit. If you absolutely need something, you can always try to buy it wherever you are. So just keep that in mind when you're packing, really critically think about if you need that item and if you know you're gonna wear it, then it's probably worth it. But Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different, but I hope it is helpful, whether you're going abroad or you're just going, you know, to a different state to visit family or maybe even for a road trip. Obviously on a road trip, I pack a little more because there's no restriction, but maybe if you have a big family and you have to fit everything in the trunk, we need everybody to be packing efficiently. So maybe you can take these tips into packing for you and your kids or whatever that might be. So, so anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching and happy travels. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.